Hey, what we have here is another Amazon scam phishing attempt. This is actually using an old school with a PDF file. Um, our spam filters, my spam filter caught this and automatically put it in the uh, junk folder. But um, it, this actually includes a PDF, so they're going old school again. So, word of wise is always... Um, be very careful of any downloads from uh, unknown sources. Uh, in this case, is a PDF. I do not know this uh, sender, so we're going to do some analysis here, and we're uh, going to do some raw raw analysis. So uh, we did dug up on this IP address here, and we noticed um, this is actually a Google a Google site. So um, initial looking on that return path, they put a junk, like a bogus return path on that email address. So when it comes up in the email, when, it, when the email program displays it, it shows this, this account and it's again suspicious. So bogus email that does not exist. So that domain and or email does not exist. And so, however, though, this one right here, this is actually uh, part of the Google Mail infrastructure. This is one of their SMTP servers that they use, this SMTP server header that's placed on that email message. So the, that fir those first few rows there going back, that's bogus, which means is the attacker or the hacker will put in a bogus label on a re bogus return path and kind of corrupt and or override the headers. So, but that's flag number one. It's bogus looking. So just doing some initial research on these headers. Um, and so we also noticed here, we're digging around here, and this domain, this domain does not exist. So um, another suspicious where they, uh, manipulate the email headers. So we had to dive down to that second this is Google header there. And so I went ahead and just did a general your name at whatever because um, to replace my personal email address as we're digging here. So we keep on digging through the this file here and again Google like we saw here. So this is more of the the signature of the email headers. There's our Google uh, signature so we keep on digging and um, we obviously already know that our email program put it in our spam filter but we want to find and and the email program showed up as an attachable download um, so again this is this is a so the attacker is actually using gmail to send these out and so also notice the subject line email Amazon receipt Amazon will never send you a PDF file that's what I'm alluding to so now in the two message this is a bogus this is this could be a real email address but wow I can't believe it I, I believe it now I believe it now it's super powered Amazon oh my god I that's that's totally totally legitimate Super powered Amazon. Wow. That's that's folks, that's super bogus. So here's here's our attachment. Here's the attachment again going through the email headers here. Here is the payload of that attachment. As as I showed before, our email program showed that we could have downloaded it. Um, so this is actually going into the obviously we're going to the raw email source. And this is, if I can spell poison <laughs> or bad PDF file. So again, be very suspicious on w if you receive an attachment from somebody you don't know, especially PDFs, especially Word documents. They can have embedded code, malicious code, JavaScript, etc. in there. So the PDF in this case is is our focus. So the rest of this is the uh, signature of the email chain so it's not of interest of this analysis and I'm just scrolling through it really quick here and I'm scrolling back up so sorry to make you dizzy 
Um, but we we're initially going to go through this here, and it's just the um, hexadecimal dump of the signature. So not super interesting. So we're, we're so basically, well, let's go backtrack now. We always I always search for href. That's always going to be an HTML. If it's an HTML listing, we did not initially find an href tag because this is technically not an HTML file. The payload is actually a PDF. So they're just using old, good old-fashioned email, and they're attaching a PDF. So they're not even, I don't even see any HTML code here. So your email program should place this in junk. But let's, let's just do some initial digging on this forensics here. So we downloaded the attachment, and it was in our junk mail, and it would not let me download unless I moved it to a temporary folder. And then from there, I was able to uh, download it. So here it is, sitting here. So it's definitely a PDF. It's suspicious. So we're going to go ahead and use, um, this is Callie's forensics, PDF forensics toolkit here. The tool to test a PDF file. So we're going to change to our downloads directory. So here we are. Here's our PDF. So we are going to um, list. Okay, so we are going to first disarm this file. And that dash D, so it created a disarm file. And then we're going to go to our directory. So we're going to do PDF parser dash filter, and then we're going to pipe it to a file, filter.log. And then we're going to bring up that file in um, uh, just a text editor. I'm um, trying to dive in more deeper, and it may just not be that very sophisticated. So let's go ahead and open up that file that we just did. Filter.log and downloads. Three megs, wow. So it dumped the entire felt file. These are just a, a this is just PDF formatting. Um, we can search this file, it's kind of large. Search it for HTTPS or anything anything bad, but it's just a it's just a dump of the PDF structure. Well that's boring. I don't see any plain text. This is just a PDF structure. Bingo. Bingo, we found it. Okay, we found it right there. Bingo, bingo, HTTPS. So I'm going to zoom in, type true action, and there, there's our bad, there's the badness. So I'm going to zoom in here. But basically, we dumped this. So let's recap what we did here. We, um... We did a dash filter, and then we're searching through our file. We typed in HTTPS, and so as you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. So here's our UR line, and then it's wrapping, and then there's the image. Sorry, it's wrapping. So there, there's our bad, there's our bad site. It took me a while to find this. So there's, so there's the URI. And there's our bad site, like we mentioned before. So this is, so I didn't have to open it up and disarm. I could just just uh, forensics analysis the file, and there we go. So this is this is the bad site here, which is embedded in the file. So that's that's a bad bad site. And there's 42 occurrences of HTTP. So let's see how far how many occurrences do we find here. But that kind of conclude that concludes our investigation here, our forensics analysis of this PDF file. And um, so basically, uh, what we did is, this was in our junk mail, our spam. We had to take it out of our spam folder, copied it to a temporary directory, downloaded it, unplugged the network. So we are on a safe forensics lab here, and then we're just running some forensics tools to analysis, and, and 
analyze this file here. So it looks like obviously um, they're using old school to click on that button link, but we are performing some analysis of that PDF in a safe lab. Oh, that's actually very, very interesting. So the Krill, so we're searching HTTP, and the Krill, they, they built this on a Microsoft product because there's, there's a Microsoft timestamp of the Krill of the root CA. So this definitely was built on a Microsoft product. Um, we could probably dig some more here to see maybe perhaps there's got a username of the the users that created this and we could we could backtrace it there but it looks like these are all Microsoft uh, Krill which is download the roots uh, the, the cert chain this is all pointing to Microsoft um, looks like it's pointing to a root chain so yeah this pulling so when they created this PDF it looks like to me this was created from a Windows box so we're just doing some analysis here. We could probably dive in here and see if um, uh, if there's a username and a computer and a, an IP address because if the hackers aren't careful to cover their tracks when they're developing code, they may accidentally put their email in there. Uh, you know, it's kind of like when you register a program or when you when you download a program, it's going to pull all the information from your workstation. Maybe your username, maybe the computer name, maybe the IP, maybe the way you're connecting. So we could dive in deeper and find some analysis through that way. Um, and maybe there's there's some information in here that could lead us to an exact person, the developer of this code. But um, I do not uh, do not see that in this analysis. Um, we could check our strains here and, and do some parsing that way. But um, I just I'm just poking around again, looking for HTTP or HTTPS. And again, it looks like this was created from a Windows machine. It would be really neat if we could find like the user ID of the hacker developer. That would be really cool. Three here, and this is a disarmed. This is the disarmed file. We're going to open it with PDF. So basically, you see, it's not really an invoice. It's just basically that same email. And here's here's our link that we uh, mentioned. Before. So here's. So it's disarmed, so it's, the JavaScript is disarmed. We are on a machine that is not connected to the network. But as we see here, clouddns.ph, again, a Philippines address, a Philippines suspicious link. Our email software went ahead and put this in our spam folder, and it took us, we had to override those settings to get this file because our spam filter was doing its job. But if we were to click on this link, let me, uh, if we were to click on this link, then definitely um, it would copy. So there we go. This is the link. So we disarmed this PDF, and there's our link. There's our malicious link there. We are disconnected. We are on a safe, safe uh, test lab here. But um, we just did some analysis, and there's our link. There's a suspicious link. So um, this is similar to the um, so this is basically the uh, the email here this is the attachment and we disarmed it so there's nothing potential here it's basically the the standard Amazon you know your account's been locked out you cannot provide any we can't we except obviously as you can read this to resolve this issue verify your billing address and telephone number so um, if you're able to complete this with 24 hours so there's no space there that's you know that's a and then down here, this is actually kind of interesting. I just wanted to point this out here. Um, we hope to see you again soon. Okay, this to me, just looking at this without our analysis, this is obviously a foreign. This is obviously a foreign address because the English that they are using, English is not their first language. Um, my guess is because it's an Asian country, they use Happy Day, Family Day come back soon like an a like a Chinese restaurant but hope to see you soon um, the Amazon team support instead of so definitely so they copy copy this from their Amazon's page but this right here grammar you know is this is not how a a a Amazon would speak and then there's something else up here so we just arm this and so here's here's our malicious again here's our malicious website we had to dig a little bit because the spam filters were taking care of us as they should but there's our malicious site so again very similar 
uh, bring, bring it up here. Very similar. I'll, I'll zero in again here. So yeah, this is this is a malicious site hosted on CloudDNS.ph. That's a Filipino site. So um, we could definitely try to click on this. We are disconnected from the network. But uh, we've disarmed this file, and uh, that's it.